Welcome to round one in Cape Town at the Kalani International Kart Circuit of Rotex Max Challenge South Africa. And Mini Max is certainly going to be one you don't want to miss out on. Let's find out from Ed who the top contenders are. The Mini Max um, going to be a sort of seriously fought battle. Local boy again, um, Jason McBeath is showing great speed at the moment. Um, not to be overlooked would be, of course, Mohamed Wally, who is the reigning Micro Max champion. He's now moved up to Mini Max this year. Outstanding competitor, I'm sure, will be in the fray. Um, Ethan Steer has been very good from Cape Town. So there are several others who will join the bun fight at the front. Every race we've seen so far at the new surface here has shown much quicker lap times. And look at Jason McBeath's qualifying time there ahead of Mohamed Wali. A 44.6, that's incredible lap time. Snayman and Morel there ahead of Steer and Malcolm. Ethan Steer, of course, as you heard from Ed, definitely a man to watch out for. I qualified pole, which I'm really happy with. Um... This weekend's been really good. We found a lot of time in the setup, and um, well, we're just going to go with the flow for the strategy. The track's been resurfaced, everybody seems to be very happy. It took a bit of a step down advantage back uh, away from the guys. Uh, do you really like the circuit now that it's been resurfaced? Um, I drove on all the surfaces so far, so I really like this surface. It's much better than the previous. Um, my competitions, like, you've spoke to both of them already, but um, they're really tough competition, and so, yeah, good luck to them. Inshallah, tomorrow I'll get in the front, drive away, and win all three, inshallah. Talk to me about the other guys in the class. Where's the competition going to come from? I think maybe the competition will come from, like, Mac, Be Mac Beath, uh, and Troy Sleiman. How are you going to handle it? Inshallah, tomorrow I'll overtake them on the first corner and then drive away. Well, I think the front can um, dice a little bit, maybe make some mistakes. I can find a gap to go into the front and I can hopefully run away from them, yeah. Who are the guys that you have to watch out for? Uh, Jason and Mohammed. Well, I mean, uh, last year we were up there, so I'm hoping for a, a podium. Who are the guys to watch out for? Well, definitely Choice Neyman, Bjorn Bertholdt, um, Mohamed Wally. Yeah, a anyone in the top 10 can win it. I mean, so close. The circuit, you like it? Yes, yes. Uh, it, it's a driver's circuit. It's, it's very challenging. Um, my weekend's gone good this uh, so far, and yeah, I think we have a good chance of winning it tomorrow. Who's the competition for uh, Mohamed Wali and Jason McBeth and Troy Stemann. So what's the plan for tomorrow? How are you going to handle it? Try and pass everyone and try and run away. Talk to me about who the guys are that you know are giving you a hard time. Uh, Troy Stemann, Mohamed Wali. Um, all the front guys, because I have a tough competition, I need to get a good start on the first race, otherwise my day is going to go downhill from there. Do you like the circuit? Um, it's my favourite track so far. Um, I especially like the 180s, because I feel like I use the full track and I feel like I'm really fast there. Well, we were right up there in the last practice, right there at the front, and then all of a sudden, just in the quali, too much grip. The track has been resurfaced, the dynamics have changed slightly, but uh, tomorrow's race day, different kettle of, kettle of fish. Well, I think the resurfacing doesn't really matter that much anymore because we've got so much grip here again, it's crazy. So what's the strategy for tomorrow? I think go up there, get to the front as fast as possible, and hopefully get a top three. Um, being in Minimax is kind of overwhelming. Um, I'm just learning as because I just started this year and this is my second race. Hopefully things go well. I've been having a lot of technical issues lately and my dad's still learning on like what to do with the class and the carts and setups but hopefully I do good tomorrow. What made you choose to come racing? So I've been coming here since I was a little baby and one day I just pointed 
coming to down to this place and I was like, uh, we were standing at the main clubhouse and I pointed down and I'm like, what's there? And then the manager here said, oh, that's a go-karting. My dad took me down here and my next birthday he got me a go-kart. And you're enjoying it? Yep. And is it nice competing with the guys? Yeah, sometimes. They're very competitive, these boys, eh? Yeah, and they, just because I'm the only girl, they bump a lot. Well, top three is not a bad place to be aiming for as we go into race number one here. Carl Lawrence joining me in commentary booth. And it is going to be an epic fight at the front end of this one. It's great to see a big field of carters heading down towards turn number one. They stay in the tram lines. They break out as we go down towards turn one. It's Muhammad Wali who has got the drop and leads into turn one. Who Snayman's head nearly hitting his exhaust as he got a big shunt from behind. I think that was from Teo van der Laan in the Praga. She's moved her way up to fifth. Jason McBeath, the big loser there, dropping all the way down to about sixth place just in turn one. Matt Morrell, I think, up into third place. So not a bad start there from Matthew as he comes into the 180s. As they all start to sort things out here. It's a little bit more difficult to spot these drivers because they've all got white helmets. They haven't had their spray jobs done just yet. So we'll try and spot them from a mile away. In the other classes, that's what I kind of look for. You don't even look at the numbers because you can hardly spot them on these carts. But uh, great to see a, a start like this with six carts fighting for the lead as they come through to complete lap number one. And as I said, Mohamed Wali trying to do everything right here. The potential to win this championship is certainly on his shoulders. Yeah, it'll be two for him. He won the previous championship in the Micromax. But choice name on the one who's always had the white helmet. He moves his way up into third and looking very hungry. He's shown proper pace in the northern regions in the mini, in the mini max class. So he'll be looking to move up fast to the front end. Yeah, Paul Malcolm just behind him and just ahead of him though is of course the hard charging uh, Mikel Fernandez. Now Fernandez, remember last year, absolutely dominated this event. So it's not quite where he was last year. He's got some serious work to do if he wants to get to the front end. He's now looking for a chance of getting into the top five, never mind onto the podium. Yeah, Teo van Laan there looking to get past him. She's uh, starting her first season of national competition on the Praga there, doing very well to stay inside the top six. Yeah, of course, uh, we saw her brother in action a little bit later, uh, early on, and uh, definitely someone to watch out for. A young lady driver certainly becoming a threat in amongst these uh, very fast youngsters, and uh, not scared to throw it in there with the boys and uh, give them a run for their money. Matthew Morrell going defensive early, but he left them just a little bit too much room there, allowed him through. Taif and Alon tried to go around the outside as well, and that dropped her way down. She's gone about to, like, down to eighth place there behind Jason McBeath. Well, Malcolm was the man who was on the attack there. He didn't quite make it stick coming out of the 180s. He led into the 180s and then had that position returned on him coming out. Now he comes back as Morrell goes defensive and just manages to keep him out. Oh, loads of sand on the track oh, there. Oh, and sideways action. There you go. The Burrell, the Burrell art machine getting sent to the sideline. And that's not what we're expecting. Unfortunately, a big loser there, Matt Morrell. Yeah, unfortunately, Paul Malcolm also getting caught out by the sand that was brought onto the track there, but obviously by previous drivers. The front two managed to get away with it though, but Troy Snayman is taking the lead. Taking the lead. Uh, he's got through there and he got ahead of Mohamed Wali. I think that was due to the fact that there was some sliding through there. I think Wali might have just been caught out by a small slide, allowing that door to be opened up. Snayman capitalized and got through. So uh, the two of them now, the class of the field, getting away from McBeath. And Jason McBeath, let's see how far back he... No, it's, that's a long way to go. That's a huge margin still to make up there and uh, see whether or not he can do that in uh, the 12 laps of action we've got here for Heat 1 of Minimax. He's had massive pace though over the weekend, so if anybody can do it, it is him. But at the moment, it looks like a carbon copy of the Northern Region Championship. Troy Snayman and Mohamed Wally leading it out, battling for the win. And trying to get away from the rest of the pack in the, the way that they do things. Heading down towards Turn 1 one more time. They're lining up in the background. It's a, a super start here, and as I said, Jason McBeath just trying to bridge the gap and get away from the, the two behind him. Mikel Fernandes and Matt Morrell. Morrell looks like he might have got back onto track, so uh, watch out for him. Starting to make his way back into the hunt here as they come flying through there. That is uh, Fernandes. And Fernandes, I think, just concerned about the fact that he doesn't have the same kind of pace as what we saw. But you were talking about it earlier on and how things have changed up with this new surface and uh, the setup of the carts to get them right. Yeah, last year Mikel Fernandes ran, walked away with the chair at the National. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the same sort of pace that he had then now, but he's still doing, still going strong there in uh, fifth place, chasing down Teo van Laan in the Praga. Oh, nice run there from Teo. She manages to keep out the attacks of a couple of the boys there. And they see her in full flight coming out of that chicane. Uh, a nice lap time just being set there, 41, uh, 44.9, I beg your pardon, from Troy Snayman. So that might just be enough to maintain his lead in this one as we get into 10 of 12. And it's exactly what I expected. He's been able to keep that gap ahead of Muhammad Wali and third place still in the hands of McBeath. Mikhail Fernandez now dropped behind Teo van Laan there, looking for a way past as they head into turn one. It's going to be a do or dive move. 
chooses to leave it for later. We're getting into the first one. 80's nice. Also a good option for a pass. As Troy, we look at Troy's name on building that gap on uh, Mohamed Wally. Yeah, Wally then McBeath in the AC tower just losing out. Fernandes dives on the inside. Van der Laan just tucks in behind, tries to come back. Uses that cutback option out of the second 180. It doesn't quite make it work this time, but uh, definitely using and showing that she's got the ability to use the lines and uh, the racecraft that's required for Minimax. Definitely got a strong drive there out of the chicane. Unfortunately, what we can see there is the nose cone is pushed in on her cart, so that'll hamper her after this race. She'll get a penalty for it. And looking at how close these carts are running together, she won't get away with a small mistake there. Coming out of the golf club area has allowed Matthew Morrell onto her case now as they head down into turn one. Yeah, Matt Morrell's all over the back of her looking for a way to through and potentially going to dive here into turn one as a look. No, not quite close enough. And Taylor doing a super job to fend off the Burrell Art man just behind her. So it's Prago versus Burrell Art going into the 180s. And it looks like it's going to be that right to the line, if I'm not mistaken. We've got a lap and a half to go for these drivers. Matthew Morrell showing big pace in Northern Region at the moment and really come on as a strong driver. Also a driver that left uh, my stable a couple of years ago, but he's always been a very consistent and very smooth driver. And using that smooth driving style now, trying to find a way through on the lady driver now. When I say the lady driver, a lot of times, especially in karting, lady driver's got a slight bit of finesse there with uh, only a couple of laps to go now for our leaders. And Snayman, look at the gap he's got over Wally and over McBeath. Equidistant there between the top three. Now let's see if Taylor, Taylor looks over the shoulder. Morrell goes on the outside. He'll cut back and you have a late apex for good drive down towards the 180s. Watch for the outbreaking maneuver here she, into the 180s. I'm sure she'll go defensive here. Yeah. She's just got to be careful not to outbreak herself when going defensive, which unfortunately she looks like she's done. She's lost a bit of traction mm -hmm. and that's just allowed Morale through. Morale taking that opportunity and the advantage that was given to him and dives through. But uh, the Prague lady, as I said, I was about to say just how difficult it is to drive these carts and to be as smooth as you can. With the ladies, it gives them a little bit more finesse. And that's exactly what Taylor was putting in there. But uh, the finesse at the front end, though, was all about the 5-4-4. And what a great drive from Snayman to take the win ahead of Muhammad Wiley there for second place. Jason McBeath came through for third. Mikhail Fernandes finishing up in fourth place just ahead of Morale. Then it was Paul Malcolm and Bjorn Bertolt. But as you said, Taylor getting that nose cone infringement dropped her down to 10th. Second race of Minimax. They line up. Oh, and look at that front end. This is going to be fun in games. But a race one winner on pole. Can he go back to back here for a double victory in the Minimax? He gets a good start. Muhammad Wiley goes with him down into turn number one, but around the outside. Oh, hello. Keep an eye out. And it's going to be some big action from the 542 as we see Ethan Steer now in the mix. Oh, it tries a very good cutback there, but Troy Stamon wise to it, and that's lost him the place to Muhammad Wally. Ethan Steer was the man to watch two weeks ago here at the pre national test. He ran away with all three heats. So having a, uh, a bit of a bad start in the first heat put him on a bit of a back foot, but. He's definitely got the pace to run in the front. If you look at Mandler, Lamgeli having a, a look there on uh, Fernandez. He gets it done. Fernandez running wide allows Morrell and Paul Malcolm through there as they head out of the golf club onto the uh, pitch straight. Yeah, chopping and changing in that backpack. They've got to try and sort things out there. They've got to try and be as smooth as possible. You see the Samra driver coming through there. Having a super run here in the second heat. He'll be looking again on the podium again. Whew, big move from Morrell. Diving on the inside. They're trying to make up the ground that he lost early on. But out front, well, it looks like um, now that Mohamed Wiley's at the front, he's trying to get away from this pack. But Ethan Steer is bringing along Troy Snayman. And right up there as well is Jason McBeath. This quadra course there, Amanda looking good. Looks like he's got a bit of pace to hang on Jason McBeath. Jason McBeath, again, being the fastest all weekend, fastest in qualifying. He just hasn't been able to turn into a race win, so he'll be hungry to get to the front and get there early. Yeah, McBeath certainly looks like he's... Uh, in for what is going to be a great second heat of racing here in Minimax as they go into the chicane one more time. Eastern Steer under big pressure. Here it comes from Troy Snayman. Snayman going to dive on the inside, have a look into turn one. He's on that inside line. Is he good enough on the brakes? Yes, he is. Done and dusted. Second place. Steer Troy down Snayman. to third. And Snayman, oof. once he went through there, it looked like uh, McBeath is going to have a go. Yes, he does. There we go. Wow. So Ethan Steer losing out big time there. Second to fourth in two corners. Troy Snayman, always the last of the late breakers, uh, and always the one to take the risky move. Never scared to try the risky move. He made it stick perfectly now. He's going to try the same thing on Wally. Mohamed Wally out front, leading at this point. Can he keep it all together now? There's still too long to go for this race to be sided just yet. And Ethan Steer is still in the mix. And in fact, don't even worry, because uh, that Burrell art machine of Matthew Morrell is about to join these four. 
I was about to say he's keeping his front pack of four honest and he seems to be getting back onto the back of them if they keep fighting the way they are he'll be there very very shortly next couple of laps Morel will be back on this fight Fernandez just behind that and he leads out the second pack with Tara van der Laan, Giulio Canfinelli and of course uh, Ghazi Motlikar having a super super run too nice to see uh, these guys putting in some big efforts there watch out for Mishka Williams too not too far off the back end but right at the front it is all about Mohamed Wali but he's just lost out there to Troy Snayman Snayman and Wali kind of the class of the field but uh, I have to say that uh, tongue in cheek because all of a sudden we've got four carts who could be the class of the field yeah for heat two you know the racing in Cape Town always close and as I mentioned before it's definitely the slipstream and the back straight that causes that it's so difficult to break away you've got to have at least two three tenths in the cart behind you to get away to get away from the pack mm, it's not enough at the moment as they come down towards turn one again Mohamed Wali fending off McBeath fending off Ethan Steer and looking to attack the man out front Troy Snayman just opening up uh, just a cart length and in this point of the race, it's probably enough just to keep him ahead. Yeah, difficult racing here at the front. They seem to be staying line of stern, trying to keep it tidy and trying to keep the race between just the four of them. They don't want anybody else joining the party. But Morales is the only one who seems to be hanging on. Fernandez and Munda there behind him, having a big dice with Teo van Laan to get onto the back of his pack. Mm, this is too far off, I think. They've also been joined by uh, Giulio Canfanelli. So a four-way battle for uh, the top four, then a gap down to fifth place all on his own at this stage. Morel, and then another four-way battle for uh, sixth to tenth place. Brilliant driving here from all these drivers and take nothing away. Any one of this top ten could be potentially a race winner throughout the season because they're showing that kind of pace and that kind of maturity in their driving. Yeah, Giulio Campanelli making a step up from four strokes to two strokes. It's his first national season running with Sean Frost, one of the fastest drivers I've raced with in his own right. So he's got a good mentor and coach to help him along the way and hopefully we'll see him in the front when we get back to Joburg. The snowman is looking after Canfinelli. That's going to be awesome to see. So Frosty, we wish you all the very best. 11 out of 12 and uh, things about to get sorted out here for heat number two. Morel hasn't been able to bridge that gap. He has the second pack though. Led out by the 502 of Mikel Fernandes. And of course, that's the man we spoke about earlier on who literally dominated this event in 2018. But now, Taya with a bit of pressure coming from behind and it looks like she's going to have to fend off the attack there. It's not going to be an easy day in the saddle because Paul Malcolm is putting pressure onto her big time. Yeah, there seems to be a couple of gaps here throughout uh, the front four. Choice name on checked out there from, uh, from uh, Mohamed Wally and uh, Jason McBeath getting a little bit of a gap on Ethan Steele. Oh, enough, I think, to just control it now for the last lap. These four shouldn't change up too dramatically unless there's any maneuvers here from Steer. And yeah, the front three, I think, are just too evenly matched and uh, too equidistant to, to make any inroads into each other. It's only Ethan Steer that I'd be concerned about right now as they go through the 180s. And Steer, the danger man for McBeath, not really for Wally or for Snayman, on the top two. Yeah, the work that uh, Wesley always been putting into uh, Troy Snayman over the last couple of weekends seems to be helping and he seems to be managing that pace quite well and managing that lead set quite well. Something Wesley Ward did quite, quite easily in his career. Oh, on a few occasions at World Championship level too. But as they come through now to complete the race, heat number two is going to go to Troy Snayman. Take nothing away from the effort that was put in from Mohamed Wiley. But the fastest lap of the race, a 44.8 from Snayman as well. And that was in the real closing stages. 11th lap actually was when he set that best lap. So that was giving him the opportunity to get away from Mohamed Wiley. Oh, how's that? That is sad. Bjorn Bertold having to push his car across the line to finish up the race. But take nothing away. Well done, young man. That's what it takes to be in national karting. Snayman ahead of Wally. McBeath in third. Steer in 4.5 is Matt Morrell. Head of Fernandes, Fendelon and Kian Fanetti for the top eight. Straight into heat number three now. And this is where it counts. 15 laps, three extra laps as they line up. Shoo, here we go. <laughs> How's that front row? I don't know if I'd like to be on the front row of Minimax today. I don't think you would either. I don't think I'd like to be on the front row of any of these classes this weekend. Here they go down towards the line and across they, they start the race. Mohamed Wally dives on the inside almost instantaneously, but he outguns the pole man. Troy Snayman loses out big time, but unfortunately Mohamed Wally's maneuver wasn't good enough to keep out the 519. What a start there from 519. Matt Morrell, he has got to the front in the Burrell Art Car and looks to get away right from the word go. Troy Snayman got eaten alive there on the start, running down to like 6th, 7th place, just ahead of Paul Markham there and Jason McBeath. So a big change up in the front here. Ethan Steer getting a good start up into fourth, but uh, quite a mix up there at the front. Yeah, I'll check with third place, Taya van der Laan coming through there. What a start from the Praga lady. An incredible drive from her. She was just in the right place at the right moment and made it stick up into third place. Outgunning the rest of this pack. Ethan Steer now trying to make up the ground that he lost. The biggest loser there, as you said, 544, Troy Snayman now moves up into fifth place. 
just getting through there, but uh, not what he wanted for the start of this one. There's enough uh, laps in hand, and up to second place. Taylor's up to second. Wow, how's that for a change-up? Yeah, KT Motorsport driver there, Taylor van Lon, moving away up into second place, but it's going to be difficult to stay there with the amount of drivers behind her who have the pace to win a race. Hmm, all of them have the pace. That's the problem you've got right now. Look at that, chopping and changing the background. And big maneuvers there coming out of Mikel Fernandes. Fernandes trying to go defensive, went left, right, left, right. Not allowing any of those drivers through. Paul Malcolm is in that pack as well. We just see that helmet of his coming through the, the pack and looking for a way through. Troy Snaymon is the most dangerous man right now. Looking for a maneuver as they come across the line. And not quite close enough. No, as a go. The Tony Kart shoves up the inside and out guns the Praga lady. Drops her down to fourth place. So somehow in two laps, she's gone from second down to fifth. Matthew Morrell up to second. He looks like he has a real turn of pace. Just pulling away slightly from Steer. And I know Troy Snaymon's going to be having a go at Steer soon. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about this one. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult to sort out here. Remember, as I said, we've got three extra laps to play with. And uh, still lots of race action to happen as they go down towards the golf club. Oh, past that cosmic machine <laughs> and through that cosmic branding. There's no cosmic cart in the front end of this one. This time out, it is all about that brutal art machine of morale. Out front, though, and is Muhammad Wali. And oh, Whoa! Snaymon dives on the inside. Snaymon on the inside, on the dirt. Trying to find a way through there on morale. Yeah, like I said, he's always the driver that take that risky move, but I don't think he realized there wasn't, wasn't enough tar left for him to use. You know, look at this now. Oh, he's had to take evasive action, and that was Ethan Steer who dropped back two or three positions behind Macbeth as they came through. So it looks like uh, the maneuver that was pulled caught a couple of drivers out. They all kind of rolled out, and it didn't quite carry the same corner speed as what they'd normally do when you see those big yellow flags waved at you frantically after an issue like that. I think Steer chose to go outside to go around that accident. Taylor van Lon chose the inside, and she came out the big winner in third. And unfortunately, Steer, the big loser down there in sixth. Still enough time to try and make up that ground, though. So Ethan Steer will be pushing hard and charging hard. Speaking of charging hard, Taylor trying to put the pressure on to Morel. And they're all trying to close that gap down to Mohamed Wali. Mohamed Wali, clean and clear out front. Oh, yeah. Morel's made a mistake. Morel pulls to the sideline. He's made a mistake there. That has dropped him rapidly to the back. And allowed both uh, Macbeth to get through and Mandla Mlangeni. So Mlangeni getting through there as well. So a little bit of opportunistic driving coming through from Mandla. But the squad recorder man is not going to hold back as he goes onto that back straight, chasing down Macbeth. Yeah, big move here done with the slipstream. Mandla can have a go down into golf club. He's going to leave it alone. Cosmic Corner becoming a, a bit of a, a, a difficult one with all the sand and the debris that's being blown onto the circuit with the headwind that's coming down towards him. Well, they come through the chicane and once again Ethan Steer lines up Mungeni as they go onto that uh, main straightaway completing another lap there's Steer diving through can he make it stick no not quite close enough Mungeni keeps him honest and uh, has to say to him nah, try another place you're not going to get it through turn one yeah Troy Smeaman on a big move now now trying to catch on to Mohamed Wally but this is the battle we're watching it's Paul Malcolm on uh, Fernandez they're trying to get past and move their way up the field they've been front runners every heat but just haven't been able to get the positions they deserve Troy Snaman making his way through rapidly, and that could help him out, that's for sure. Coming on to 12 of 15, Mohamed Wiley's got Snaman. Oh, and Snaman has closed up rapidly here. Taya keeping out McBeath. McBeath diving on the inside, didn't quite make it stick into turn one. Then it's Morrell, and then uh, Fernandes fighting with Malcolm. But uh, the battle is now for the lead, and I think Troy Snaman means business. Mohamed Wally's had it all his own way. He's had it uh, very comfortable in uh, the first half of this race. And now heading into the latter part and the last couple of laps, I think Snaman could be the danger man. Yeah, Snaman just able to run tighter into the 180s. There. I don't know if you saw, he's able to turn it in earlier and cut a little bit of the corner out while still getting a good exit. So he seems very strong through that sector. So we need to watch him onto the back straight on Molly. Comes onto the main straight now, dives on the inside and it looks like he's going to take the lead. He's got it. He's just set the fastest lap of the race as well. 44-5 coming out of Troy Snaymon. That's more than enough to hopefully hang on and keep out the attack now from Wally. Wally will definitely uh, go for it. He's not going to let it uh, go by lying down and uh, taking it easy. He's going to come straight back at the 5-4-4 machine. And snayman has got his work cut out now for these last couple of corners. Yeah, nobody wants three seconds on the day. So he's going to be working hard to try and get past Troy Snaymon. Troy Snaymon having uh, the, the drive of his weekend this weekend being able to drive from the back like mid-pack there all the way up to the front yeah now with the final lap he's got only Mohamed Wally to worry about as they start this last lap he's going to try and just place that cart perfectly not to open up any doors and allow Mohamed Wally a chance to squeeze through if he can Wally dives on the inside and oh he gets through good move sure absolutely perfectly done so it's now Mohamed Wally who takes the lead now as they head to the back straight will Snaymon have an opportunity to get through 
Shoulders is going to be tight. He needs to block more Wally, otherwise Stamon's going. There goes Stamon there. Slides the card out to Adam, and unfortunately Wally slides off. Dust all over the circuit, so it's going to be tricky for the drivers behind them, but he managed to get himself back up into second place. Is that Jason Webb Wally as opposed to Muhammad Wally? Because that's what Jason Webb does here at this track. Man alive, he was sideways on the dirty stuff. Managed to hang on to it, but Snayman takes the win. Muhammad Wally very lucky to hang on for second place there after that last maneuver through the final corner. Jason McBeath takes the third place ahead of Matthew Morrell. Then it was Paul Malcolm, Ethan Steer, Taya van der Laan in seventh, Fernandes Bertolt and Canfinelli making up the top ten. Talk to me about today's races. Brilliant way to start the championship, winning three races. Yeah. Um, I think it was quite tight on the last seat. Uh, last corner overtake. It was quite tight. Uh, yeah. But talk to me about the race day as a whole. Uh, did you expect this weekend to come away with three wins? I did not expect that. Maybe a win or two seconds, I did not expect three wins. Now, three wins, championship lead, how are you feeling about that? I'm feeling really excited. Can't wait until the next, uh, for round two.